when it comes to the system testing it is not required to know what exactly and how exactly the implementation is being happening so i have four different countries if i select any one of the country the equivalent conversion will happen sir is it mandatory that i should have r1 no it is not so whatever the number that you want the unique number you can give it Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the very interesting topic that's going to be the object oriented system testing. Sir, we have discussed this chapter in the beginning, no sir, in the second unit. Yes, my dear students, we have discussed the chapter called system testing. But in this session, I'm going to discuss about the topic or the chapter called object oriented system testing. So there is a big difference between the object oriented system testing and the system testing that's what you need to remember so find what exactly that i have in this session so guys let's check that quickly for all of you so i will be discussing the currency conversion problem with respect to the uml description along with that i will also discuss the uml based testing so guys so let's check and let's get into the session quickly so what exactly that i have here in the first slide so Sir, you will be very curious. I am discussing about the system testing. So it's a very important and interesting topic. Yes, please observe. When it comes to the system testing, it is not required to know what exactly and how exactly the implementation is being happening. So that's the most important thing that you need to remember. Sir, why do you say that? So system testing is a independent unit is what you need to remember at this point of time. So fine, that is the reason that you don't have to know or you don't have to remember or you don't have to understand whether it is a procedural oriented or object oriented implementation is happening. So you don't have to worry about that since you are in the system level testing. So fine. So we understood that. So guys, when it comes to the primitive, so please observe when it comes to the primitive, sir, primitives in the sense what? The fundamental things or the basic things. When it comes to the primitives in the system testing, the main important things that I will call it as a inputs and the outputs. What exactly the input that I will have? What is the output that I will have? That is the more important things that I will consider when it comes to the system testing is what you need to understand. So find what is the most important topic or the line that I need to remember in this slide. So guys, the next point, the last point in this slide that you need to understand here that I have here is, sir, the issue is all about, so this one. So how to identify the threat? That's the most important point that you need to remember. What is the important point that I have? How do we identify the threats to be used as test cases? That's the most important thing that you need to understand. Yes. So guys, let's understand how. And let's go to the next one that we have the problem statement. So guys, we have the problem statement here. So I'm considering the same old example that is going to be the currency conversion. So in this currency conversion, I think all of you have watched the concept called GUI testing. So there we have already discussed so we have the GUI, so where if you enter the US dollars, so I have four different countries. If I select any one of the country, the equivalent conversion will happen. The currency conversion will happen. So that's a problem that I have here with all of you. So fine, let's get into that quickly. Generally, if I ask you, imagine you guys are the users or if I ask you, so what exactly the system is doing and how exactly the system is working? So what exactly you will tell me? So you will tell me the requirement or you'll tell me the functionality of that particular system in a small story. So that story is what I will call it as a user story. So in that user story, I will be coming across with the three important things. What is that? So please make a note of it. The first one. So when it comes to the system functions, so three important things I will come across. What is the first one? It is going to be the evident. When it comes to the second one, so please observe, it's going to be hidden and it's going to be frill when it comes to the third one. So what exactly the system functions? We have three different types of system function in that evident and also hidden, also frill. What exactly is that? Evident in the sense, the most common thing, like, you know, it should occur. The most common thing, you know, which should occur, you know, obvious thing, okay? The functionality, it should be there in your system is what I will call it as a evident. Hidden in the sense, some of the functions which you cannot recognize, which you cannot identify. So such functions, I will be calling it as a hidden. But some of the functions which will come in between, 
So like, you know, bells or the alarms. So such functions I will call as a frills. So that's what you need to remember. Here I have listed some of the reference number and also the functions. So here we have categorized different functions, you know, which, which is categorized as evident and which is categorized as hidden and which is categorized as frill. So let me show you that one by one. So what exactly that I have? I have reference number one. So I will call that as a R1. Sir, is it mandatory that I should have R1? No, it is not. So whatever the number that you want, the unique number, you can give it. So, but I have the first function. So start application. So what category is this? Will it come to? So it will come to evident. What is the meaning of evident? So I want you all to please observe evident functions are the obvious ones. It should be there. So that is what I will call it the evident functions. So all these things, end application, it should be there. Input US dollar amount, it should be there. Select country, it should be there. I cannot do without that. And perform conversion collection, it should be there. And also clear user input, it should be there. So all these things will come to the category of evident. That's what you need to understand here. But when it comes to the maintain exclusive or relationship among countries, it's hidden function. So I'll not be able to identify that function is what you need to understand and then display country flag image. So that's going to be the category for frills is what you need to observe in this category. So guys, this is what you need to understand with respect to the different system functions. All right, moving forward to the next topic that we have presentation layer. People say that this is a beautiful quote. Pictures are still a worth thousand words. A picture will explain about the concept very clearly. So that's what you need to remember. Guys, here I have the picture of the system. So if I just look at the system, you will get the complete working style or what exactly that I have with respect to the system function. You will you'll be able to understand in a much better way is what I would like to tell you at this point of time. So what does that we have here? So US dollar amount, I have a text box. Yes, I have to enter the US dollar amount. And then equivalent in which country, if you select any one of the option, automatically the country will come. And then you have three buttons where you have to put your input. So for example, if I press compute, automatically the amount will be calculated, right? In the same way, clear, quit. So this speaks very well, right? So this speaks very well about the system function is what you need to remember at this point of time. So that's what they say with respect to the presentation layer. Moving forward to the next one, that's a very, very important thing uh, in this session. Guys, what exactly that I have? High level use case. When it comes to a high level use case, guys, remember in short form, I will call it as a HLUC. When it comes to high level use case, so you will not have much detail information. So that is the most important thing that you need to remember. When it, whenever I use a word called high level, most of the information will be hidden. You will get the information in an abstract level is what you need to understand at this point of time. So I have listed out some of the high level use cases here. So from, it runs from one to nine. So what exactly that I have here? Guys, this is the use case number, high level use case number, which is one. And then the function name, system function name that I have here, that's going to be start application. Here I will be having the description what exactly this function is doing. Like that I have listed out some of the eight or eight to nine functions so I have it in my screen. So let me just explain that how exactly they have listed out here. One thing you need to remember, whenever I say high level use case, so you need to understand you will not get the complete detail information. That's the most important point that you need to understand in a conclusion of this slide. So fine, let me explain with this high level use case information one. So you have start application. What is the meaning of it? What exactly this function is doing? So you will get with the description. User starts the currency conversion application in Windows is what you need to remember. So fine, when it comes to the use case two, end application. So please observe here. So I have the references here, the same thing I'm speaking here almost, right? So what is the next one that we have? The second one, end application. Description for this, the user ends the currency conversion application in Windows is what you need to remember. When it comes to the third one, 
convert dollars what exactly this function is doing for me so the description is what i have here the user inputs a us dollar amount and then selects a country the application computes and displays the equivalent currency of a selected country so that's what you need to understand it's obviously all of us know about it all right so the next one is revise input say for example i have selected some country i don't want that country i'll take some other country so that's what we are doing with the new transaction Fine, moving forward to the next one, repeated conversion, the same dollar amount, same thing, okay, I have uh, selected, you know, uh, Japan, okay, I want uh, one more conversion for the different amount, so that's what will happen in this, so like this, I have revised inputs, abnormal case, no sell, no country selected, so you want to convert, but you, are, you have not selected the country at all, so that is the next one that we have, the next one is Abnormal case, no dollar amount entered. So you have not entered the dollar amount, US dollar amount at all. So that is one of the abnormal uh, situation that you have. And the next one that we have is no dollar amount entered and no country selected. That's going to be one more you know, situation that you will come across in the system function that you will come across here. So this is going to be the high level use cases, different cases, different situations is what you will come across. And that is the information that you will get with a high level use case one. But when it comes to the essential use case, my dear students, you need to understand this very, very carefully. When it comes to the essential use cases, guys, you will have, when it comes to the use case, a most important thing that I have to understand is all about the actors. When I say actors, it can be, so please understand, it can be a people, it can be a device, it can be an adjacent system, or it can be abstractions such as time. So guys, why do I need this actor? Why it is so important with respect to the actor when it comes to the concept of use case? Because I get the input or I interact with the all these actors to get the input is what you need to understand. If I say that I'm getting the input, so I will be getting the input with the help of these actors is what you need to remember at this point of time. So guys, now how to understand this Let's understand this very clearly with these two diagrams. It is very difficult to understand. So I need to uh, tell you one more important point. Uh, let's understand this, guys. What they say here in this point. So it is very difficult to understand the sequence of four and five, the response of four and five. I want all of you to please make a note of it. So what exactly the response of four and five? So they say that EUC3, EUC3 in the sense essential use case, Three, okay, I will be speaking about it. I want you all to please make a note about it. EUC3, guys, in the EUC3, I will not be able to find the sequence of response four and five. So what exactly it means to, sir, I want all of you to please make a note about it. I will be speaking about it right now with the help of the diagram. So fine. I want all of you to please observe this EUC1. So this is the use case number one. And here you will have the start application. This is the function system function name. Here's what we will mention here. And again, we have the description. What exactly the description is happening? What, what is the description of the function? Sir, we did this in the high level use case design also, no sir? So that's what we did in the previous concept. We did this one, no sir? Yes, my dear students, we did only this much. We don't have the much detailed information. But if I want to have the much detailed information, so I want you all to please spend a little time, observe here. I will also explain, I'm not only giving you the description of the system function, I will also explain what exactly the event sequence is happening in this use case. That's what I'm going to explain to all of you now. So yes, if I do that, so I will be able to understand that system function in a better way is what you need to remember when we compare to the previous concept. Yes, sir, can you guess, give me the example for this? Yes, please listen to me carefully. I am having the first function that's going to be the start application. You all know that if I say start application, we have read the description in the previous slide. So what is that I have? The user starts a currency conversion application in the windows. We all know that. What happens? How exactly, you know, events will take place? So listen to me carefully. Guys, the first input event, what exactly that I have? The user starts the application either with the run or command by the double clicking on the application. This is the first thing that the user will do with the input. 
So fine, we got an idea. Now, what is the next thing? What is the output that will happen? The currency conversion application GUI appears on the monitor and it is ready for the input. Yes, I'm getting a clear idea now what, what exactly the system is happening in the system is happening. So hope you understood now. So guys, this is the first case that I have with respect to the start application. When it comes to the use case three, observe here what I have. So convert dollars. What is the description for this I have? Observe here. The user inputs a US dollar amount and selects the country that application computes and display the equivalent currency of selected country. That is what we are trying to do in this description or in this system function is what you need to remember. But how it happens? So listen here carefully. I will tell you the event sequence. Sir, input events. What are the input events that we'll do remember and listen to me carefully the first input is going to be the user enters a dollar amount what is the first thing will happen user enters a dollar amount is what you need to remember so fine user has entered the dollar amount what is the next thing so dollar amount is displayed on the gui so that is the next response that i should get as soon as i enter it so fine what is the next thing we should happen the user selects a country that is a, after entering the US dollar amount. So I should select the country. I in the sense, user should select the country. The name of the country. So please observe. The name of the country currency is displayed. Country's currency is displayed. So after that, so the flag of the country currency is displayed. So after that, so guys, the user requires a currency conversion calculation. And the last step, the equivalent of the currency amount is displayed. So this is how. You need to understand. So if you use the essential use case, you will get to know about each and every system what you have. So complete interaction with the input sequences and the output sequences. So what exactly we are trying to do. So you will have a complete detailed information is what you need to understand at this point of time. So guys, with this, I have come to an end of this session. In the next session, I will be covering a lot more topics. So stay tuned. Enjoy the video. If you have liked it, don't forget to click on the like button. Thank you.